Now it's time for uh, today's perspective and we're talking about a book which is about well the oldest profession in the world, prostitution. What is incredible about the book though is not only the way it's been received, already winning prizes, but also the way in which it was written. To write about prostitution, my guest today, Emma Becker, who is half French, half German, knew she had to find out more about it, to immerse herself in a prostitute's world. So she did just that and actually worked in a brothel in Berlin for two years. Her book is called La Maison. She joins us here on set. Thanks very much for coming in and talking Hi. to us today. I mean, it does seem a, a quite an incredible thing to do. I mean, it's one thing, isn't it, to, to live amongst prostitutes and get to know them and get to, to know the, the, gain their trust and see what they're doing, but to actually decide to, to take part in it yourself is another, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, that's because I thought there is uh, absolutely no point staying on the outside because you might talk with how many uh, prostitutes you want, but it won't change the fact that you won't know for yourself what the job does to you as a woman, to your body and to your soul. And to write a fair book about the subject, it seems only fair that I would have to work as well to uh, become one of them and then uh, make a book about my uh, immersion in this world. So what do you feel you did learn from the experience that you were able to put into the book? Well, I, th I feel like I've learned uh, a thousand things, but uh, among those, I guess, um, that the, the dynamics of powers are usually not what you would expect in a, in a brothel, that uh, most of the time in that particular house, the women felt like they had the power and uh, it didn't matter that the, the men were paying. The person who was paying was actually the one who was not in power. So the powers were completely reversed, and it was some kind of um, some kind of a, of an experience about womanhood that I've uh, made um, way beyond prostitution. I think what I'm talking about is desire and how women conceive it and leave it, and um, yeah, and how it evolutes and, and changes constantly. I mean, that's quite surprising that you actually felt that, that it was the women that had the power rather than the men. Yes, but I think, uh, I think it actually this kind of situation happens also in an everyday life. I think the, the brothel is merely um, some kind of caricature of dynamics between uh, men and women. It's some kind of like um, looking glass in which um, the relationships between men and women become way more uh, well they seem way more intense um, than they are in an everyday life because they're reduced to the very mechanics of it, women and men being drawn to one another and how prostitution and the, um, the brothel is some kind of an attempt to reduce uh, loneliness between uh, human beings. And what do you think you were able to take from the experience then to put into the book? I mean, was it just individual little stories that, that happened that you could include in the, in the, in the story? Uh, well, I think there's that, but mostly I think uh, it describes the um, one age of a woman, one period of her life, one uh, special context, and it's uh, one of the many sides of what being a woman means. Um, and this is what my books are usually about, uh, depending on what age I was and what I wrote about. It uh, describes the experience of someone in this world living as a woman. I'm sure there'll be people watching who are saying, surely this is just a step too far. I mean, actually taking part in it and becoming a prostitute yourself. Well, it might seem like a step uh, too far, but I mean, this is the reality of uh, many, many women and men who are uh, making this job. And what I wanted to show is also that prostitution is not only some kind of slavery. It is to some extent, but there's more than that to prostitution. And I think at one point we have to listen to the people who actually assume doing this kind of job and are actually proud of it because those are the people that are going to make the situation move forward. And those people know what conditions are actually okay to work under and what is not. And I wanted for once that we would listen to those people and what they have to say and what they experience on an everyday basis. So you don't think that there's, I mean, is there not an aspect of you perhaps legitimizing prostitution? As you say, there are lots of different levels of prostitution. For some people, obviously, it's, it's horrific. You know, mm -hmm. They could have been trafficked. They could have been being forced to, to be prostitutes because they have nothing else in their life. Yes, for sure. But I mean, as I, as I say uh, quite a number of times, this is not an apology of prostitution. If this is an apology of anything, it's the apology of this particular house that I was lucky enough to stumble upon. Uh, because this house is the proof that there is, that it is actually possible to make prostitution um, um, some kind of normal work and to make it, um, to make conditions that are actually decent for women. 
for women and I'm not legitimate I'm not making it um, I'm not trying to to preach for prostitution I'm just trying to show that as long as we're keeping it illegal it only makes things worse for everyone mm. and if we do make it legal then this house is a proof that some places can be invented for women by women and everyone can have decent conditions of work I mean, I, I read as well that, um, for example, your publishers were worried that the book would be voyeuristic before they, mm. you know, before they, they published it and they were concerned about it. But they felt, having read it, that it's yeah. not like that at all. Because I don't think sex is the most relevant aspect uh, of the work, because actually sex in a brothel um, is quite conjugal, I, I would say. What's interesting is what happens before and after, the dynamics of desire and um, what uh, Georges Clemenceau used to call the going up the stairs is actually more interesting than, than what happens behind the door. So I don't think I, uh, I wrote something graphic or even voyeuristic, that was not my point. My point was to to talk about those women and the waiting between the clients and this community of women, they're actually way more um, friendly and supportive to one another than we might actually hear on an everyday basis. So it's more about relationships, if it's you like, It's more about than the relationship sex. and sisterhood also, you might say, which is something that I was um, astonished to find in that context. So you were surprised, yeah, you were surprised as well. When you first started, it wasn't what you were expecting to find. No, of course not. I was not. Um, I mean, I was expecting something in my head, something that would come from one of those Maupassant uh, books where all those women are gathered together and they're almost like sisters. And I never thought I would be lucky enough to stumble upon a house that would remind me of that, in which women had all the power and men um, would just bend a knee somehow. Mm. And um, this is unexpected and I think uh, it's important for people to know that those places exist, uh, places where women have a possibility to say no. Let's talk about the law as well. I mean, over here in France, it was made illegal, wasn't it, prostitution a year or so ago, in theory banned over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, having said that, when you walk through the streets of Paris in some areas, you, you, you wouldn't necessarily know that. What do you feel about the, the law banning prostitution? Well, I, I don't think prostitution is illegal in France. I think it's like this Swedish model that we have, which means that the clients are actually punished. Mm. Um, but I think it's a completely uh, hypocrite uh, law and eventually people should maybe uh, gather. And when I say people, I mean also prostitutes because uh, we do need prostitutes to establish laws and a frame uh, that would make it livable for everyone. And I think it does not bring anything to keep and try and make it illegal when we do know that it exists and that it's everywhere, also in France. Um, I think it would be way more interesting to try and reflect and make a situation in which those people could work in a normal way uh, because penalizing it and making it illegal uh, only just makes it worse and makes it easier for traffickers. Emma Becker, good to have you with us on the programme today. Emma Becker, that's our book, La Maison. Hopefully, you never know, so perhaps it'll be in English one day as well. I hope so. Yeah, but hope. <laughs> Thanks very Thank much. Thank you Emma. very much. Thanks very much for coming and talking to us on the programme.